Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular okay. dealers. They'll try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 500. Four? About halfway. Oh! If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say no way. Reject that offer. Have a gamble. Place it into an auction. We might just get a little bit more money there. All of the selling. Today the show comes to you from Ormskirk in Lancashire. There's a cracking crowd of people here. They've been queuing since early this morning. They are determined to do business. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. First up today is Henry Nichols. Will he be signing over a bundle of cash for this little lot? Well, what have we got here then? Right, when I was a child, my parents used to go to a lot of auctions. Yeah. And to keep me quiet, they used to always say, pick a little something, but nothing very expensive. So my parents bought me those as a treat for keeping very quiet during the auction. Fantastic. So why, why are you wanting to get rid of them now, at this stage? Um, well, last week my washing machine broke and I thought I could, <laughs> could do with a little ah. bit of money put towards a new one. Right, that's fair enough. Well, we'll see what we can do. Let's discuss what we've actually got here. We've got a couple of autograph albums that date to the early part of the 20th century, sort of First War period, up through to the 1920s. We've got here a little watercolour, signed down here, M.L. Cooper, which not an artist I, I recognise, but it's beautifully painted. It's like a little miniature work of art. And this was typical of all these sort of books in this period. People would paint um, little scenes in there, or they'd put little poems, etc. And we go on to this page here. This is quite interesting. We've got here some signatures from people that were obviously involved in the First World War. We've got the Royal Field Artillery here, three and four battery. And then we move on to almost the very end here. Funny little cartoon here about the Mad March Hare. I like what we've got in front of us. Um, I think they're fun items. Commercially, they're quite good, some of them. So what I'm going to do is put some money on the table and let's see what we can do. OK, I'm going to start with 20. How does 30 pounds seem? No, sorry, that's not enough. Not, not enough? enough. No. Am I a million miles away? Just keep going and I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> OK, I'm going to put another 15 on the table. So we're up to £45. I'm getting kind of close to where I want to be. It's not close enough for where I want to be yet. OK. Just some more, please. I'll tell you what I'll do. £60. I would actually like a little Oh, here more. comes David. A very difficult thing to value and estimate this. I've had a look through. There are some very interesting illustrations. It's a very specialised item. Certainly, Henry is within the estimation given by our independent values. They're saying 50 to 70, and what we've got there is 60 quid. 60 pounds. If you went to auction, it wouldn't surprise me if it did better, but I think I'd be tempted with the cash. Thank you, David. Right. There we go. I mean, do you want to go to auction? I think I'll take David's advice, and I think I'll accept the deal. OK, fantastic. We have a deal. Sharon, thank, thank you. you very much. Now, tell me, how much did your parents pay for them? Three or four pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd like to have bought them for. I'm really happy with that. I got 60 pounds for my books. Uh, I'm really, really pleased. I can get my washer fix now. <laughs> <laughs> That's left Sharon in a bit of a spin. Over at Stuart's table, will this Art Deco piece in Tyson? A ring. Tell me about yes. it. Yes. Please. Well, it was my mother's engagement ring and it became too small for her and she passed it on to me when I was 21. Right. But uh, it's too big for me and I haven't been able to use it as such, so it's been in the drawer for many, many years. I'm not telling you how many. <laughs> no, no, no. So... <laughs> Just uh, four or five, I should think. Uh, oh, <laughs> too kind. <laughs> Quite an interesting ring. It's obviously a diamond, isn't it? You can yes. actually see straight away, can't you, how mm -hmm. it sparkles. It looks to be 18 carat. 18 carat and platinum, so uh, it's marked, which is quite interesting. Puts it between the wars, so would that tie in with her? Yes, uh, it does, when yes. When you bought it, yeah, mm -hmm. good. You bought it here to sell it for the right price? Yes, indeed. 
So let's see what we can come up with. 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Nowhere near. 120 pounds. It's nearer, let's be fair, it is nearer. Ne it's nearer, but no, I'm afraid not. 140 pounds. No. No. I don't see it any more than that, I'm afraid. I'll, uh... You'll take it? I'll, no. No. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no, no, I'll have to take it to auction take it or something. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you And all the very much. best. Thank you. Auction. Nice to meet you. Susan's full of confidence, so it's off to auctioneer Max Blackmore to see how much it brings onto the gavel. Why are you selling it? Well, it's a fund for my son. It, um, I'm funding his, um, his education, if okay. you like. OK, it's coming up now, and there is a reserve of 120. But, of course, there is a commission to come off. The offer of 140 wasn't a bad offer. Yes, I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good offer on the day, but you know, it is Art Deco, it is a diamond, I know it's not very big, but nevertheless, it's quite a nice little diamond. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I can start this at £80, at £80 with me on commission. £85.90, £95.100. The young man yeah. bidding over there, you know, <laughs> he could be thinking this is good for my girlfriend. £140. 150. 140, 150, they're liking it. 170. 180. 180 the gentleman standing. Any further bids now over this side? 108 the gentleman standing. All done and selling. 180, the gavel's just gone down. We've got a little bit of commission to take away from the 180. I make that £153. Yes! Happy? Very happy. <laughs> OK. <laughs> On the day you turned down £140, you said, no, I'm going to gamble. And you did the right thing. And that leaves you with £153 to fund What's he called your son? Christopher. Christopher? I just hope you realise, Christopher, <laughs> what Mum's doing for you, mate. The real deal was here in the sale room. Take home £153. Happy? Very happy. We're happy. Thank you. And I hope you're happy as well, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> that showed you, Stuart. Susan, you were right. We're with Jan Keane. Nice Will this you. pearl of an item win her over? I can see that you've brought in this fine suite of jewellery. Would you like to tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, well, the, the pieces belong to my mother, who sadly no longer is with us. And I'm getting married in April this year, and I felt that time was right to find a new home for them. If we take a look at the necklace first, it's beautifully made with these sections of culture pearls, and they're very, very finely knotted between each pearl. And it's a sort of dragon, and his back, the dragon's back, is all set with these cut sapphires, and then two little rubies for eyes, and little diamond chips all over his body and his face. I think they probably hail from Asia. That could well be the case. Um, my parents, actually, in the 60s, before that was made, obviously, they lived in Hong Kong. So that would fit in with that, it would fit in the, with, with the design. It's unusual to have a dragon on an English piece of jewellery like this. It, that, that's what it really says to me. Absolutely. She must have been a very elegant lady, your mother, and a very slender frame, because they are quite small. Yeah, they are quite... She was a very elegant lady, and she's remembered as such by, by a lot of people, actually. But mm. the, she was a small wrist and quite a small neck. Yes. Quite how many people now wear chokers, how wearable it is, I do question that. But I suspect you've got a figure in your mind of what you're after. Mm, the rough ballpark, yes, I would say so. So I need to put some money on the table. That'd be nice. And see if we have a deal. Let's just see and I'll gauge your reaction. 100. 200. 300, 400, 450. Well, as an opening offer, it's all right, but I wouldn't let it go at 450. 
Am I a long way off? I wouldn't say a long way, but you're not close either. I would say it's in between. We're going in the right kind of direction. Mm. OK. Another 50. But I think it's worth more than the basic scrap value for it because of the, the lovely design of it, the yes. way it has been made, the history of it. And I think somebody would be very, very pleased with that. Um, I put down another 50 to make it 550. And I'm really getting up to, I think, where I want to be. It would be a steal for you if you put another two of those down on the table now. I suggest we meet somewhere in the middle and we say 625. I feel that it's worth more than that. So I'll accept 650. So another £50 note goes down and you're saying we have a handshake. We have a handshake. A man of his word, and at 650 we have a handshake. We have a deal. Thank you very much, Thank Gordon. You very all much. the best and all the best for your wedding. Well, haggle, Gordon. Coming I up. Figure there is money in them, their hills. Debbie is faced with a tough decision. Because it is a gamble going to auction. It is a gamble. We could end up with less. I know. But... For the last time, make your mind up. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We're with James Late, and this next item has caused a stir in the den. Dave and auctioneer Max Blackmore are spectating from the sidelines. But is James brave enough to offer big? Hello, James. Mandy. Mandy. And Debbie, is that Debbie, right? Debbie, yeah. I'm glad you remembered your name. <laughs> Thank you. you. Look, you've got an exotic hat on, like your, um, <laughs> like your figure. Thank you. <laughs> so do you like her very much? Yeah, I do, yeah, but it's not, it doesn't go with my style. It's my style of I thought it would go with your style. <laughs> anyway, yeah. tell me all about it. What's the, what's the family history? Uh, it's been passed down and it's just been in my house for yeah. years and now I just thought I'd sell it and move her on. Um, I've just... I see this name on here, T. Galli, Tiziano Galli, who worked for a very famous Italian manufacturer called Lenci. Right. I don't think this is Lenci. Let's just have a look at the bottom. I don't think there's any mark here at all. Have you had a look? No, there's absolutely nothing yeah, there at all. No. That would be marvellous if if we could find that name on it, because it would make it a very valuable thing. My feeling is that it's 1950s, but it is a fantastic model. I mean, it's got vibrant colours, it's got lots going for it. The things that it hasn't got going for it are the fact that she's lost quite a lot of her foot. Yeah. A bit of the headdress has gone yeah. there. And she's also lost a bit of her hair, that tip there. So it's got three bits of damage. Yeah. Do you know how much you are hoping to get for it? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Oh, you've got a good idea. We've got an idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Max, a very glamorous figure. I mean, as soon as this came through the door, the first initial guess was, of course, the Italian Lenzi factory. factory. Absolutely, yeah. It has that look. That, of course, is merchandise basically from the 1930s. But what do we know about it so far? We know because it's signed that it was designed and produced by an artist called Galli and uh, trained in the 30s and by the end of the Second World War, he had his own studios. The interesting thing is, he obviously was influenced by Lenzi, but we can't find any record that he actually did work for Lenzi at all. Certainly with Lenzi, a small art deco figure of a pretty girl, perhaps in that two to three thousand pound mark. Yes. Here we have, again, a very glamorous image. Yeah. So the potential is there. Now, we have a dealer here today. It's not normally his kind of thing, but I know he will see the potential. Let's mm. see what he puts down on the table. I'd like to offer you 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. You're not looking very impressed. <laughs> 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. Can't even 20, 40, 60, 80, 300. Yep or no? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you said no, because mm -hmm. let me tell you what the independent value is, what the auctioneer think, and what I think. They're saying six or seven hundred pounds. But if this brought a thousand pounds at auction, it would not surprise me. Yeah. Now, don't get excited, because I'm not saying it will do. 
I'm saying the potential is there for the right collector. And I'm going to say, James, 300 pounds, James, not on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are, that's told me. So we'll get a bit more out. Uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 4, 20, 40, 60, 80, 500, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, so that's 600. If it wasn't damaged, yeah. I would go a bit more, but I think, honestly, that's that's as far as I want to go. So it really is it really is your call now. So if it was like another 100 more, I'd just probably go with it. Yeah, Maybe. but you know, like... I've still got to get it restored and then I've got to make a profit. So I'm going to stick at that. But, you know, you can always gamble. Well, I've come back and you've asked for, say, another 100 more, and I think that's realistic. Mm -hmm. If I was him, I would put down another 100 quid because I figure there is money in them their hills. <laughs> oh, and no. so it's down to you. If you go to auction, you'll still have the piece if it doesn't yeah. sell, so yeah. you don't lose anything, but you can gain go if on. you go to auction. So I'm going to, for the last time, make your mind up. I'll split the difference, as they say in the trade. I'll put down another 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We could make more at auction. Well, you could, but there's, right. it is a gamble. Yeah, we'd have to And don't forget, you've got to pay a commission yes. as well. I'll put, I'll put the other 50 down. Is that going to help I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know, because I don't want to just is, this give is cash, it away. This is cash like, in the hand. I know, but... Look, look, I... look. Another 50. One, two, three, four. OK, well, that's it now. I think I'm, I really have come to the end. I think you want to take it to auction, don't you? I mean, I don't know. I... You may regret it. Maybe. <laughs> Should we just go to auction then? I think it's looking that way. Yeah. OK, well, look, yeah. I hope you do really well. Thanks. And thanks for bringing it along. Thanks for your support. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It was tempting, but I'm hoping 1,200, a thousand and a half. I'm thinking, I hope so. I'm glad I didn't walk away with the money because I know we'll get more, won't we? Hopefully. <laughs> you will hope, no, we will. We will. We've our fingers and toes crossed for you, Debbie. It's over to David to see how it does. On the dealer's day, you came with Mum. I did, yeah. She's not here today. No, she couldn't come today. She couldn't come today. OK. Now, you brought along something very stylish and very, very interesting. I thought it was a great item, a Lenzi-style figure. You sat down with James the late. He eventually offered you £700. Yeah. Pounds. yeah. What did you think about the offer? I wish I had, Well, I don't know. It was tempting, wasn't it? Was it was tempting, but... I know I could get more, so well, you know, I'm risking it. Let's see what happens. The reserve is 700 quid. I think it's fantastic, but do they think it's fantastic? Let's find out. What should we say about it? £1,000 for it, £1,000 anywhere. Start me somewhere. 800 800 pounds anywhere? Come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's start somewhere. What about 600 What about £600? £600. Pounds? Further bids now, £600. Decorative piece. Are they Almost here like on this. the day the bidders? It so seems they're not. Before. No interest on the net. 600. Well, it's not enough, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have to do better than that. No further interest. Gavel's gone down. Yeah. I heard that. Oh, oh no. OK. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Disappointed, obviously. Yeah, I'm going to cry. Don't cry. <laughs> I can tell you. Cross my heart, it is a fabulous item. Because it didn't happen today here doesn't mean this is not a good thing. Lean on the duke, that will feel a lot better. On the day, the real deal. James, you had an eye for it, 700 quid. That was the real deal. We're very disappointed it didn't sell, but we don't really care because we know it's worth its money on another day. The Duke's right, Debbie. Another day and she'll fly out the room. 20 if you like. 5, 8, 40, 50. It's straight over to Stuart for a spot of needlework. A little crochet set. Tell me about it. Has it been in the family and yes, so on? Yes, it belonged to my, uh, I presume, my great-grandmother. I inherited it from a great-aunt. 
And, and, and do you do crochet? Have you? Have no, you used I've it? never it's used a... it. It's far too dainty for me. Have you it seen is. the little hooks? Yes, I mean it's a seriously Victorian sort of needlework. Yes, come, it, I imagine uh, it must have been like very light, like lace when it was done. Mm. It's so fine. I mean they're very fine crochet hooks, Aren't as you they? say. Yes. And, and they all screw into the end of this yes, handle. And look yes. at the handle. I must say the handle's pretty. This is banded agate. Yes, it's and it's, lovely. Uh, it's just like a stone. Yes. Marble stone and uh, just just lovely. Yes. Um, what I think so special about it is that it's in a case. Yes. It's kept all its parts. There's no spaces no. where you want to say, well, there was something, but it's missing. It's yes. all there. Yes. I absolutely love it. Um, I'd love to end up with it. So let's see if I can buy it. Twenty. Forty. 60, 80, 120 pounds. Could it be a little bit more? Be a little bit more. Mm. 120 pounds. 140 pounds. Yes, I think that would do. So we have a deal? Yes. Thank you very much. I think that's a very fair deal and I'm delighted and I hope somebody has it will enjoy having it because it's very pretty. <laughs> With that deal sewn up, Margaret walks away a happy lady. Coming up, Debbie's a bit of a tough nut. You're not looking very pleased so far. Certainly not. <laughs> Who will crack first? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's been a busy day in Ormskirk with dozens of antiques and collectibles coming in. Will it be raining money over on James's table? Hello, Hi. Debbie. I'm Hi. James. Nice to meet you, nice James. Nice to meet you too. So you brought along this weather compendium. Yes. And once upon a time, it, it had a thermometer. A thermometer. So what yes. happened to the thermometer? Well, when it got packed away in the box, it fell off in the box. Okay. So, so. It's, it's basically it's a carriage clock, isn't it? With you've got the clock there. Yes. So this is a, a, a barometer, yes. an aneroid barometer, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. compass on top. Mm -hmm. yes. So it is, it's a, it's a kind of little domestic weather station in yes, a way. Yes, it's an all-in-one, isn't it? Yeah. And it's French, almost mm -hmm. certainly French, probably the first quarter of the 20th century, sort of 1910. Yes. I mean, it's, it's quite an unusual thing, I have to say. Yes. And it's, and it's nice. As yes. far as you know, does it all work? As far as I know, it works. Yeah. It's, I think it's quite a nice thing, but bearing in mind I've got to spend £100 on it. Um, you can try and make me an offer. I'll make you an offer, yeah. Because um, it's my 50th birthday in next January. It couldn't be. And I want to go on a cruise. <laughs> the cruises are dangerous <laughs> things. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can put something towards it. OK. Well, I'll put some money on the table. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. You're not looking very pleased so far. Certainly not. <laughs> 140, 160, 180. I think we can do much better than that today. Oh, do you think so? Are Tick. you going to help me house here, David? I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to help you out quite a bit, actually. Tick tock. What we've got here is this mm. duo. You've got this timepiece. Yeah, timepiece. And barometer. And, and Roy barometer. We know that the uh, thermometer is missing. Mm -hmm. We know that has to be replaced at great cost. Great this, cost. This is what we've been told. But I can tell you that both mm -hmm. the independent valuers mm. and the auctioneer, they vary. Three to four hundred yes. and three to five hundred. So I'm going yes. to say to you, no. It's yes. raining outside. There's not enough money on the table. We want sunshine and we want more money on mm. the table, please. Thank you for your advice. You didn't need that advice, did you? No. <laughs> you weren't going to let me stop that. No. Okay, not what at have all. we got? 180, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. No, I'm not going to take that. No, all right. No. You want me to keep going? You can keep going. 320, 340, 340, and one from here, 350. Can we not squeeze a little bit more? for this cruise holiday of mine. I, yeah, I'm worried about this cruise holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we got, 350 there? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll have another rummage in my 10 pound note department. Mm -hmm. 360, 370, 
380. I think it's getting there, honestly. But it is a fabulous clock. It, I'll gamble my 380, mm -hmm. but I won't gamble anymore. No. So. So you could gamble. Well, I want my cruise holiday, so I am going to gamble. You're going to gamble. Go yes. to auction. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for bringing yes. it. I hope you do very well. Okay. Thank, thank you for bringing you. it along. I did expect more than what James offered today. You know, somewhere around the 500 mark. Um, but hopefully, if we go to auction, I'll guess a little bit more. And cruise Caribbean, here I come. I think she'd be lucky to get what I offered. I, I can see it going for about 300. You know, I hope she does better, but I think that's the reality of the thing. Doesn't look like a cruise to me. Will the sun shine on Debbie at the auction? Let's find out. You brought along an Edwardian duo case carriage clock. One was the clock and one was the barometer. You turned down on the day from our dealer, James Lake, 380 quid. Not a bad offer, you know. Yes, um, but I do think I could guess a bit more. OK. Here it is now. Are we going to do better? Well, I hope so. It's a nice, we collectible will. item. <laughs> She's confident. Certainly am. £400 start, 400 300 Start me somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. 400 300 Slow here at the sale. Yes, it is. Further bids now: two hundred pounds, two twenty, two forty, two sixty. Further bids now. Well, two sixty is not enough. There's no further interest on the nets. What's happening today? Is everyone saving their money? Two sixty is not enough. I need further bids. Two seventy. Late bid came through the net there. Two eighty. Two eighty. We're in the room. Oh, the internet's come into it. Late bid on the net there, but it's still not enough. 280 is the final bid. I need further bids. The gamble has gone down. It came short yes. of the £300 reserve. Our dealer, James Late, offered you £380. Yes. You turned it down. I Do you did. regret that now? Um, no, because I still think it's worth more. Okay. So I will hang on to it. Now, I like that yes. enthusiasm. I feel the same way. On the day, James Late, our dealer, 380 quid. That was the real deal. Hard luck, Debbie. Good call, James. Now it's back right, to ladies. Stuart. Yeah. Will he yeah. offer enough to pocket this miniature piece? And I love it. Tell me what you know about it, what you think it is, please. Um, it's my great-grandmother's, and right. I found it in a box of papers and in the bottom of the box was this, and I know from the initials that it was my grandmother's mother's. All right, I've got to stop you there, first of all. Go on. Why do you want to sell it if it's your great-grandmother's? Um, Honestly, I don't, you know... There's, there's no use. It's just going to get lost, it's that small. Yeah, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. It is a pretty thing. Do you know what it is? Is it tortoise shell? It's tortoise shell. Yeah. Uh, which is, in reality, is turtle shell, but mm -hmm. everyone calls it tortoise shell. Mm -hmm. And it's called PK work. Mm -hmm. where it's gold and other metals inlaid and it's a little tiny purse. Lovely, lovely little purse. Look at that, look at that. What's lovely about it, all the silk lining doesn't appear to be worn or torn. And, uh, I don't know how long it's been in the bottom of the box of paperwork though that I've been going through because it's, it's all my grandmother's paperwork, so... Well, this is definitely um, 1860, 1880. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's in lovely condition. Um, a bit of gold inlay, as I said, but the actual clasp on it is, is not gold, it's just a, a metal with a gilt finish on right. it. That would have been nice if that was gold as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for gold, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bid you 100 quid for it to buy it. Mm -hmm. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Um, from what you've just said, I'd like a bit more, please. <laughs> and that's all you get from me. Um... It's a great shout, I think. Yes. Is that a deal? Yes, definitely. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, will this attractive pendant appeal to Jan's girly side? It's a family heirloom. It's been in the family for quite a while. Uh, we're hoping to sell it today for a realistic price, and uh, we're hoping it's going to go to somebody who will appreciate it. I can see that you've bought in this pendant. Would you like to tell me 
a little uh, bit yes, more about it, it. It's, it's come through the family from a great, a, a great aunt, and uh, it's in a drawer at home. It really comes out. So maybe it's time to say goodbye. Well, had a little look at it, and it's very delicate and very typical, I think, a sort of 1900, 1910 piece of nine carat Art Nouveau jewellery. And on the back, it's got <clears throat> the maker's mark, which I think is WW Limited with a nine carat mark, nine carat gold. And it can double up as a pendant or a brooch, which was very wow. common. And it's very pretty. It's got all seed pearls and this little teardrop of a turquoise down here. It is beautifully, beautifully made, but of course, you have the craftsman then that would yeah. make all this lovely jewellery. I'm going to put down some money. Yeah, fine. I expect you've got a, an idea what you're looking for. Yes, I have. Let's put down 50. 70 pounds. What do you no, think about no, that? No. I'd, uh, You'd rather put it back in the drawer bit, for that? I'm looking at quite a bit more, actually, because it's an heirloom in our family. Tell you what I'll do. I'll take that away and I'll put down a 50 and say I'll give you £100. Because I can see you mean business. We're getting warmer. Uh, I think I'd like a bit more, if possible. If I put that 20 back and we call it 120 I think it's a very good offer. Uh, I'd just like to check with the boss. I personally. don't blame you. I think you ought Is that to. Okay? You don't want to get into trouble. Fine. You go and go ahead Thank and you. check. Is that okay? I think we've got a deal, John. And we have a handshake. We have a handshake. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much indeed. Thank you, John. Thank you. Coming up, Beth's got all her sums worked out. Three ways that's. Perfect. Each. That sounds like a jolly good holiday. Mm, maybe some petrol money for me for bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> but how much will Henry pay out? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The day is drawing to a close here in Lancashire, but Henry has time for one last deal. Hello, I'm Henry. Hello. Beth. Beth, nice to, nice to see you. Um, we've got a pocket watch and we've got a gold Albert chain with a sovereign attached to it. Yeah. What's the history of it? Um, the watch actually belonged to my mum's father. Right. Um, and it was quite an elegant gentleman and there's photographs that we've got of him wearing the watch. How fantastic. Um, and he always wore a carnation in his lapel as well. Oh, how wonderful, mm. how wonderful. What are your reasons for wanting to get rid of these? Um, well, there's myself, my sister and my brother, and my mum said, does anybody, you know, want it? And obviously yeah. it's not really in fashion. We've said, no, we don't want it, so that's okay. why we're here today. OK, well, let's have a, a look at the watch. What we've got here, we've got a watch that was made by the Waltham Watch Company, which was based in Massachusetts, and it's a gold hunter. It's a full hunter because we've got a cover for the face at the front. Now. It's rather nice because it's in wonderful condition. If we just have a look at the back, we've got here the movement at the back that's signed up WW Co, which is Waltham Watch Company. And obviously we can see it's in working order. It's marked as nine carat gold on the back. The case is actually an English made case. Oh, right. So the movement would have been made over in America oh. and the case was actually made over here. If we move on to the Albert chain here, it's a really nice curb link chain here with the T-bar on it and then we've got a sovereign on the bottom. The unfortunate part about the sovereign is that that is only worth its weight in gold because what somebody's done, they've soldered the sovereign onto a mount yeah. and coin collectors will not buy a coin that's been mounted. I they see. want them in as good a condition as possible. The money, presumably, if I end up buying it today, is going to be divided between the three of you. Probably, Okay, yes. and what are you going to do with your bit? A holiday. A holiday. A trip. How much <laughs> Don't you, know where. How much you expect <laughs> Maybe to, to expect to, yeah, I was going to say, how much you expect <laughs> me to put on the table? Um, so, I mean, I'll try and buy it from you because it's a nice object. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I certainly wouldn't want to scrap the Albert chain because, to be honest, I see so many of these Albert chains going into the melt. Yeah. You know, it's, it just seems a wicked shame. Yeah. So let's see what we can do. OK. 50. 100. Don't worry, I'm going to carry on. 150. 
200, 250, 300, 350, 400. Do you want me to keep going? Mm -hmm. Sure? Yeah. That's a shame. 450, <laughs> 500. More? About halfway. Oh! 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900. What do you think? See, split three ways, that's 300 Perfect. each. That sounds like a jolly good holiday. Mm, maybe some petrol money for me for bringing it. <laughs> oh, you're a hard person. So how much petrol money do you want? Fiver? Oh, no. Fuel's expensive. Well, if you're only going to Blackpool, <laughs> it's not far to Blackpool from here, is it? Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do, Beth. Twenty pounds. How does that seem? Nine twenty. Oh, right, here's David. Well, we've got a very glamorous item here, but the real value, of course, is with the chain and the sovereign. There's close to a thousand pounds worth with the case of the watch and, of course, the chain with the sovereign. Now, Henry's got how much on the table? Nine twenty. Nine twenty. Yeah. A good offer. The question is, if I send you to the sale room, can I do any better for you? I'm a little bit worried I can't, and the reason for that is, if the gavel went down at 920, they would deduct from you 15%. Yeah. Henry knows this, and he's an astute dealer, and I think it's a good price. Um, and I can't force you to go to auction, because I don't believe you would do any better. Thank you, David. Well. Beth, 920 on the table, 300 each, £20 petrol, flat pool and back. A good weekend away. What do you think? Yeah, I'll take the money. Fantastic. Beth, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Lovely to see you. Thanks a thank lot. you. Really happy with the price, everything, and to know it's not going to get melted down and it's going to be used as a pocket watch. Delighted. Blackpool, here we come. Well done, Beth. But are the dealers as delighted with their purchases? Have they managed to make a profit? I'm going to go for gold, OK? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bid you 100 quid for it to buy it. Another dealer bought the purse as a gift for his partner at £160, earning Stuart a nice little profit. It would be a steal for you if you put another two of those down on the table now. Gordon was right. The pearl choker and bracelet was sold on to a specialist dealer, earning Jan a respectable all profit. The best, all the best for your wedding. And the striking Edwardian gold pendant worked its way into the hands of a friend, also netting Jan a tidy sum. And I think before I actually try and move them on, I'm going to have a good look through them and see if there's any that I might want to keep for myself. But nice things. The autograph books are still in Henry's personal collection as he decides whether to sell them or keep them. As for the gold pocket watch... There are items that will not be scrapped because I just think it's criminal to do that. So they'll go into my cabinet and we'll see what we can do with them. Henry kept his word and sold them on to an American client. They're now residing in a private collection in Alabama, which contains nearly a 1,000 pocket watches. It's been a really exciting day. Lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what we all want to see, isn't it? Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now. <laughs>